<laughs> What's up guys, my name is Glassfoot and Sorry, something feels off. That's better. What's up guys, my name is Glassfoot and welcome to the second ever book review on this channel and the book is The Lies of Locke Lamour, the first book in the Gentleman's Bastard sequence. Alright, so the basic plot of the book is that there is a group of thieves called the Gentleman Bastards. They are kind of early Robin Hood type figures. Um, and when I say early Robin Hood, I'm talking like original myth style, or not myth, original legends of Robin Hood, where he was just a straight up thief uh, before getting rewritten later on in uh, his career to be a rob from the rich, give to the poor type character. So basically, these assholes will steal from the rich. Specifically the rich. Only the rich. They will only steal from you if you are one of the peers of Kamor, the highest level of people within the city. They keep this a secret because uh, for reasons that get delved into much later in the book, you are not allowed to steal from the upper class, like the nobility of the city, or from the city watch. Those two are off limits, everyone else is a go. But the thing is, as long as you don't get caught stealing from the rich, there is no real penalty for you stealing from them. So because, you know, the game is half the fun, the gentleman bastards take it upon themselves to specifically steal from the rich, going through these very extremely elaborate games and these extremely elaborate schemes. And it is a lot of fun it seemed like pull off because it shows you exactly how many steps there are and it's really fun because like it goes through this whole sequence of events there are a couple points in the book where an event occurs and you're like oh crap and then it shows you the another perspective from it so like um m minor spoilers for a quick part of the book at one point one of the characters gets visited by Midnighters, which are effectively the secret police. And then the next chapter of the book is the perspective of the people pretending to be the Midnighters, which I thought was one of the best things that could have been done because it made it feel like, oh, everything is planned up from the beginning. But also I love that sense of, I don't know everything that's going on. Uh, not unreliable narrator style where the narrator just misses information, but in a style that everything is planned out and so you will eventually learn everything, but maybe not right at the beginning so it gives a little more stress to whatever scenario you happen to be witnessing. Now, what I wanna get into are the characters because as much as the plot, this is a plot driven story, the plot is what drives it, the characters are what truly make me invested, be in love, I guess I should say, with the world that is the Gentleman Bastard sequence with this city of Camor. Because the main characters, Locke and Jean, are best friends. They've been friends since they met when they were like 10 years old. Those two would literally die for each other. Towards the end of the book, they're basically telling each other, go save yourself, leave me, and they're like, no, fuck you, I'm not doing that, you can go right to hell, I'm staying by your side no matter what. Uh, the other members of the Thief crew, uh, Kahlo and Galdo Sansa, they are fucking amazing. They're basically thieving versions of the Weasley twins, if that makes sense. Uh, they're very much into pranking people, they very much like a good joke and whatnot, but they also are thieves, so like, their pranks more involve uh, tricking people so they can cut purse, uh, tricking people out of money in card games, stuff like that. And they're really, really funny because the multiple times they'll like either finish each other's sentences or they'll do this like weird mind thought where one of them will say a complete sentence and another will say something. Uh, there are a couple of moments where they just say the same sentence at the same time. Uh, I think my favorite part though is their introduction. They're like, I'm Caldo and I'm Galdo. Maybe tomorrow I'll be Galdo. Maybe I'll be Galdo as well. Like, they clearly don't actually give a shit which one is their name. They just care about fucking with people, and it is the best thing. And finally, we have the fifth major member of the Gentleman Bastards, which would be Bug. Bug is the child apprentice to this thief group, and he makes up the fifth member of the effective five-man band. And as I have talked about previously, if your show or book or movie has a five-man band, I would instantly be in love with it. But yeah, Bug being the youngest member, he is not as physically strong or fit as the others. He is their lookout. He's the uh, scout. He is very willing to smack a guard and run 
to, as a distraction for the rest of the group so they can either continue on their thieve thing that they're doing or so that they know to bolt. Bug is a very integral part of the story uh, with him being the apprentice, but the two main members that we do focus on are Locke and Jean. So that means that Locke and Jean must get the most focus, but they are not the most important characters uh, in this group. Like I said, with me being a five-man band, basically, everyone gets a fair amount of equal screen time depending on what their needs. Kalo and Goldo have been around since the beginning with Locke, so, they're, so they get a fair amount. Bug, being a 12-year-old kid who uh, I assume his parents are dead and that he's an orphan, he doesn't get a ton of more backstory than that, but he doesn't need it because he's a kid. Kaldo and Galdo get a little bit more, Locke and Jean get the most. The thing is though, we don't get more than we truly need. We get that they were orphaned. That's pretty much all of their like major past before book events that we need to know. But now, I want to get into the character that basically drives all the events of this book, the Grey King. The Grey King is the antagonist of this book. He is the one that uh, the characters are fighting because fuck him. Uh, he has been doing a bunch of shit around Kamor, fucking up a lot of things for a lot of the gangs, and he does a number of things that piss Locke off, so Locke feels it is up to him to get revenge. And the Grey King is a really good antagonist. He is very much a mind over matter character, making an extremely good pit against Locke. Locke is a very forward-thinking, plan-driven character. Locke is not the brawler of the group. Jean is the brawler. Jean can beat the shit and kill pretty much anyone. Locke, being smaller and more along the build of my little brother, he is very much the get in and out of places. Locke looks like he can be pretty much from anywhere, making him a really good master of disguise. And also, like I said, he's extremely forward thinking in his plans. He plans every single thing down to the letter because, because he's able to plan out and trick most people into doing the plan the way he wants to, even if they are the person that he is marking, basically. No, you almost fell. You're coming with me. She liked the book too, didn't you, Brie? But, like I said, the Grey King is a very mind over matter type of character. While the Grey King is able to put up a very good fight, in fact, he's killed quite a number of the leaders of gangs within the city by the start of the book, that is not a spoiler, it is literally one of the first things said in the book, because he's more physically able, but he's also extremely forward thinking. He plans everything out to the letter, basically, and he's able to pull off that brand of fuck you, I will win really well. And he did it a really damn good job of it. And so I would say Grey King is one of the better antagonists I've ever read in any type of fantasy book. Now, next thing I want to get into is how a story is told, because this is told unlike most books that I've seen. So obviously the book is split up into chapters. The thing is each chapter is split into effective parts. So it's like mini chapters within the chapters. But in between the like big overall chapters, you have what are called interludes. The interludes are where we get Locke and Jean's past, where it jumps back to when they're kids and thieving then, because, you know, that's where we're going to get the information that we need about who they were in the past and where all that comes from. Now, that might put you off, but for me, I actually like that kind of storytelling. I'm a massive fan of asynchronous storytelling. A major example of this is probably my favorite episode of the current season, Rick and Morty, would probably be the Face Hugger parody episode, where we're not actually given the full story from the beginning. It starts in the middle and kind of jumps around from there. With Mento being another movie that I very much enjoy because you um, learn things as it goes. That said, this book isn't told exactly like those things. We get the full information of whatever part that we're in, and then we get the past. Like, the first chapter, it's setting up the scam game that they're running. So we get the whole scam that they're running, and then the interlude is how Locke came to be a member of the Gentleman Bastards. The next chapter is continuing the story. The next thing is going into more of uh, what it was like for him as a kid as part of this gang. So that's the way that it's told. And personally, I actually really enjoyed that. I like getting more backstory without it feeling very exposition, dialogue dump heavy. Just a personal 
pet peeve of mine is when backstory and dialogue kind of just gets dumped into a character and it doesn't feel natural. So, so like, I personally enjoyed the looks back. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Really good characters, the main cast, Locke, Jean, best friends is something I rarely ever see in books and I'm so happy that it was so well done with these two literally being willing to die for each other, but they're just friends. Yeah, Kahlo, Galdo, and Bug are great members of the gang. They're very entertaining to read and a lot of fun. Great King being one of the best antagonists on the planet, in my opinion. Great fucking enemy for them. And, but with that, I would say that for me, The Lies of Locke Lamora rolls a solid 17. Not the best book on the planet that I've ever read. A few problems, more issuing from a couple of things. Uh, the storytelling is a little bit odd and a little bit hard to get, get off at first, but overall I found it a lot of fun and a lot of fun to read. So if you like fantasy, if you like Thieve Gangs, then I would say recommend Lies of Locke the Mora and enjoy, just enjoy the ride because it is that much fun. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that review of The Lies of Locke Lamour. This is the second book review that I've ever done, so it might not be the best thing. I feel like um, I'm personally approaching these very similar to how I do movie reviews in terms of what I'm doing. Uh, these are probably not going to be as frequent on the channel. I do enjoy reading, but I don't read a ton. Uh, I prefer watching movies and the like, rather opposed to sitting in one place and reading for hours and hours on end. I work my way through books a little bit slower, so these are probably not going to be as frequent on the channel. Wow, that was a long spiel. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, please hit like and uh, please like and leave a comment, you know that. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more content from me continuing in the future, please hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to follow me on either Twitter or Instagram, links to both of those are going to be in the description down below as always. That's all I have for now, guys. I hope that you guys have a great fucking day, and as always, peace out.